you know what man this video is not for or about aesthetics this video is to share my story and to potentially help people that are being groomed right now or have been groomed or abused i just want just one person if one person watching this video gets something out of it then that will be enough for me because i know that i'm gonna receive backlash on this video i've already received backlash on me saying a tiniest bit of my truth on instagram and providing concrete evidence for that truth. So I'm Nicole for now. But she's knocked out and um, I take a picture of her knocked out as well. So yeah. That's what's happening right now at um, 3.34 in the morning. Which the truth is, is that I was groomed at age 17 by my ex-boyfriend who was 23 at the time. I provided evidence and I was still the bitch and the whore and the crazy person. So I expect backlash from this and I accept it. But I hope that at least some of you can find something in this that you can use because this is not only just me trauma dumping on you guys. This is actually going to be my advice on how to avoid this, how to stop this if you're in a relationship like this, or what to do if you see somebody you love in any, any type of involvement with someone like this. Whatever, strap in because today we're going to be talking about the all too common world of grooming and other devious behaviors perpetuated by older men against underaged minors. All right, so what is grooming? You probably already know what it is, but by definition, grooming is when someone builds a relationship trust and emotional connection with someone so they can manipulate, exploit, and or abuse them. That is what grooming is. And it can happen to anybody at any age, but it especially happens to underage minors and children in general. Anybody can be a groomer, anybody can be an abuser, even if they look real kind and real happy on the internet. Anybody can be doing that to someone. Grooming is not just a 50 year old preying on a 10 year old. Grooming is also your 20 something year old homies who have a girlfriend in high school. Like buddy, if you are a grown adult, don't go out with somebody who has freaking gym class. Like what the fuck is wrong with you? For perspective, I just turned 23 years old, AKA the same exact age as my groomer. And would I go out with a 17 year old? Hell no, because I, I think you, you have to be in your 20s to truly understand how insidious it is to go after and pursue an underage minor to go out with. Because if you're sane, and you're in your 20s, you feel disgusted even thinking about that. And with that out of the way, I really need to give a serious trigger warning because I'm going to be going into a lot of detail about things that have happened to me. And it, it, it's just a lot. I, I put a list right here. Child abuse, sexual abuse, emotional abuse, physical abuse, okay? I don't wanna scare you away, but if this is not the right time for you to be seeing this, then I would recommend not watching it or not watching it right now. It took me from age 17 to nearly 23 years old to understand what even happened to me. And not only what my ex has done to me, but I realized that that wasn't even the first time that I was groomed. There's not just one bad apple when it comes to older men. There's a serious societal like issue with them preying on vulnerable girls and young women. And growing up, I honestly, unfortunately, seemed to be the perfect prey for these types of people. When I was 13, my sister's boyfriend's friend looked at me like he wanted to eat me up. He hugged me and he touched me in a friendlier manner than usual. I even sat in his lap at times. He gave me his number and we started texting. This man was at least 21 or older because he was literally a nurse and he had a career already. He asked me if I could send him sexy nurse pictures. 
you know, like the Blink-182 album cover. And this scared me away, so I stopped texting him. And that was the end of that. But when I was 14 and I was outside of my local 7-Eleven right by my high school, I was noticed. And I thought it was a good thing to be noticed when I was 14. I thought it was a good thing to be thought of as beautiful. And it is, but not from an adult. Let's call this guy Peter. He was 19 going on 20. And the first date that he took me on, he took me to Knott's Berry Farm. And when we kissed, the lights went out and I thought that was such a great, good omen. But as soon as he pulled his lips away from mine, he said, we're gonna be just like rabbits. And at age 14, the idea of being intimate with somebody so much older than me seemed appealing. It seemed like a good thing. I was a virgin. I thought it would be cool to lose my virginity to somebody outside of high school and so much cooler than me. But the kindness that I felt exude from him honestly didn't last very long, especially after he took my virginity. And I would later find out that it was his thing to take young girls' virginities and that he even sexually assaulted someone. I specifically remember he took note to tell me to watch out for my braces when I went down on him. And looking back on it, I can't believe how his other adult friends and family members stood by and watched as he groomed me and humiliated me. In fact, they were literally in on the joke. They would call me Peter's clown because I looked like a clown, I suppose. I was 14 and I didn't know how to put on makeup properly. So that was their little joke. This whole relationship with Peter really introduced me to the idea of normalizing older men making comments about my underaged and underdeveloped body. He'd say things like, I can't wait till your boobs come in or your boobs look bigger today or maybe you should do squats. Fast forward to 17, I'm depressed. I'm nihilistic, there's there's good friends few and far in between. And I really touched on this in my Get Ready With Me video, but I had finally found a group of friends that I really liked and I thought that they liked me too. But it was around this same time that I bonded with someone else. And that was my most recent ex. I commented on one of his pictures and said, I like your Hey Arnold tattoo. Back then, I let older men quiz me on my 90s knowledge because they'd always say things like, how do you know about that? You were born in 1998, how? And just a side note, I used to be ashamed of being born in 1998 because older men would always make me feel stupid about it while at the same time commenting about how mature I was for my age. And by the way, if anybody is telling you you're mature for your age and is trying to get in your pants, please run away as fast as possible because they're just catering to what they think that you want to hear. And my ex was literally no different. We began talking and flirting with each other on April 6th, 2016. He DM'd me first and we struck up a conversation. I'm paraphrasing, but he said, I'm pissed because somebody just crashed into my new car. And in response, I said, who cares? It has character now. And he seemed to really like that response. He asked me how old I was and I told him the truth. I told him that I was 17. And he initially made a joke saying that he was 16, which I kind of believed because firstly I was so naive and I just couldn't really tell from his profile, honestly. But he clarified after he said the joke that he was indeed 23 years old. And from my perspective, my 17 year old perspective, it felt cool to be talking to him. It felt cool to be chosen by somebody so much older than me, somebody who was a skateboarder, somebody who lived in Los Angeles, like the most exciting city here in California. And he asked me if I was still in high school. And again, I told him the truth. I said that I wasn't attending classes anymore because I went to a continuation school. And if you don't know what that is, it's basically like the bad kid school and you, technically stopped doing classes before regular school, but my graduation ceremony wasn't gonna happen till the end of the year. And the regular high school kids were all still 
in classes. I just graduated a freaking degenerate, really. He then asked me how long it would be until I turned 18, and I told him my birthday was on November 20th. So part of his whole thing, his whole defense, that he's put up the whole entire time, like he's never wavered on this, he likes to defend our relationship by saying this, is that I was close to being 18 when we went out. Okay, so we started talking on April 6th, 2016. My birthday's on November 20th. How is that? How is that close? It's not like it even fucking matters because as soon as like the clock strikes midnight on your 18th birthday, like you don't immediately get the mind of an adult that has been out of high school for years and years and knows their way around life. Like you can't be expected to know how to navigate adult relationships immediately as the clock turns 12 on your 18th birthday. Like, that's just not how it works. If, if there's a big age gap, then there is a power imbalance. It's, it's, a, it's as simple as that. So during the course of the next few days, after we started talking in April, I basically started lying to my mom and tell her that I was going to like this friend's house or this friend's house for a sleepover every single night. And in reality, I was going out with him and we were drinking together all night. On our first date, Together, he took me to a park after we went to the liquor store and he bought a bottle of Peach New Amsterdam and Cactus Cooler. Why Cactus Cooler? Because I was 17 and a teenager and I barely had any drinking experience. Like, yes, I had gotten drunk before on the train tracks with like a 40 ounce with all my punk friends because that's what little punk girls do. However, it's not the easiest thing to get alcohol as a minor and I didn't have too much experience, especially not with liquor. So needless to say, I ended up drinking nearly half the whole damn bottle as we were sitting in the park and I had my head laying down on his lap in the park and it was literally not to be disgusting but right next to his dick which like this is already this is already not good like as as an adult as a 23 year old adult presently i do not want a minor space anywhere near my junk and as my head was still laying in his lap he told me i could tell you're just a good girl looking for your way in life so right after that we started making out and we walked back to his car but as soon as i opened up the door and sat down i i blacked out I completely blacked out. And when I woke up several hours later, all I smelled was just throw up, like the stench of vomit. And I was topless. I had a jacket over my shoulders, like covering my boobs. And I, I was really confused. I was like, what happened? And apparently I threw up all over my shirt and all over my pants. And so he had taken off my shirt to put the jacket on over it. And by the way, this is something that he would constantly bring up and be like, oh, well, you're so lucky I didn't do anything to you. Anybody else would have. Like, what kind of fucking shit is that? Like, oh, you deserve such a cookie for not molesting the minor that you have drunk in your car. But when I woke up after having apparently had this explosive vomit happening, I honestly felt really rejuvenated. And I was like, I, I couldn't even figure out when I threw up or how, but he made it a point to let me know that he had been this close to dropping my unconscious body off in front of my apartment building because apparently he had been shaking me and shaking me violently and I was not waking up. I was completely unresponsive. I remember I asked him if he could buy me like a pair of pajama pants or something so that when I went into my house and like passed by my mom that I wouldn't smell so much like throw up because honestly my mom wouldn't really care. Like she wouldn't care enough to ask too many questions, but it would just be annoying and I, I didn't want to hear anything about it. He declined, he bought me a grilled cheese from Jack in the Box, and I read his tarot cards before I got out of his car, and he got the death card. But as soon as I got into my apartment, we immediately began planning the next time that we would be hanging out. So was he deterred by me vomiting all over myself and him almost getting in trouble for buying alcohol for a minor? No, of course not. In fact, he began texting me asking me if I thought that his dick was big or not because apparently before I had completely blacked out I had been touching his dick 
ew. So after this first chaotic interaction, I began sneaking out more and more to hang out with him. And one of the times I was really scared to leave and I was getting anxiety because it was around 1 a.m. and I hadn't told my mom anything about where I would be and she was already asleep. So this meant that I would have to sneak out. And so I was taking forever and basically he started accusing me of not actually being home and being with another guy. And he asked me to take a picture with a spoon to prove that I was at home right now and just scared to sneak out because of my mom. This would be a reoccurring theme in the entire relationship. A major red flag. I also spent the night at his house multiple times while my mom had no idea where my whereabouts were and I would later find out that during these times where I was sleeping over at his house and I had gotten drunk and passed out, he would leave me there sleeping in his bed and go out and cheat on me with his ex-girlfriend who knew that I was 17 by the way and not only knew that I was 17, was weirdly jealous of me and even tried to fight me one time at the Lakewood Mall. This girl, this girl had the audacity to message me today and act like she didn't do all that. Like this was a grown woman that not only knew that her ex was dating a minor, but was also happily willing to have sex with him while he was dating a minor, like, Make it make sense, sweetie. Like, go take care of your kids because I worry about them with the way that you were treating me as a teenager. So the night before my mom's last boxes of stuff that she was trying to take to Frisco, Texas, left on a U-Haul, me and my ex attended a punk show together. And I'm sorry for not looking directly at the freaking screen, but I'm gonna just read you what I wrote right here. It's an important note that he wasn't actually very into this subculture or understanding of the greater contents of it, i.e love and acceptance, particularly the political ideologies of it, which I have always adhered to, meaning no discrimination, no fascism, no fucking bullshit. But we'll come back to just how much me and my ex differ on those subjects later. In my previous video, which was a get ready with me, I stated that this was just a random guy that I attended the show with, but it was actually my ex. And I'm sorry if that turns you off that I had said it was a random guy first, but I honestly didn't know if I ever wanted to share this story or share like the full story of my abuse or anything. So that's why I just said, oh, it was a random guy. I'm really done protecting my abuser though. And that's why I am ready to just tell you that it was my ex. It wasn't a random guy. Hi, I'm sorry to disrupt the flow of the video however i am in a better mind space today and better able to explain to you what happened so let's just continue from what i was saying and i do have a whole thing typed out why because i would forget to say half of the things that i'm meaning to say without having written anything down so excuse me please so in my get ready with me i also stated that i had to couch surf after this, after my friend abandoned me and our plans of living together. However, I'm sorry again, I didn't know that I would ever be sharing this at the time. And so that's just what I said. But what actually happened is that I ended up living with Edward at age 17 in his room with all of his family present in the house for six months. And just touching on that as well, I did get a voice message from his mom after stating that I was groomed by him. And she was like, you know, that's a very serious statement to make. You can't just go around saying things like that. And like, girly, you knew I was 17. In fact, she knew I was 17 to the point at which when I initially moved in, she was pissed. Why would she be pissed? Because she knew I was an underage minor. Not just for moral reasons, but for legal reasons. This was all, this was all bad. So basically during these six months of living in room i would spend all day filling out job applications so that i could move out and move in with my sister into her apartment and just make my way in life somehow because all of this was overwhelming and happening at once and basically 
Richard would go out every night and work for Uber and make enough to feed both of us Taco Bell every night and get totally blasted with alcohol every night as well. And this also led me to slowly, slowly become an alcoholic. Like I slipped into alcoholism with this man so deeply that the way that I feel now about having a cup of coffee every day was once how I felt about drinking and having a beer. And not only one beer, but an excessive amount of beers. Like I needed it or I was pissed the whole entire day. And this is just insane to me now, like coming from where I stand. So my ex also constantly justified treating me as if I were an object up until our breakup because he had once provided for me this way. And what I mean by provided for, I mean let me sleep in his room and gave me food and stuff like toothpaste. Like this is the stuff that he held against me and dangled over my head. Every time I brought up to him that he was mistreating me, he would say something along the lines of, well, you're lucky that I did anything for you at all. You're lucky that I've done so much for you in life that I don't think anyone else has done this much for you ever and ever will do again. I am the one who has cared for you more than anyone else in your life and you should appreciate me and basically shut up. But honestly, the last time I checked, giving things to somebody that they're absolutely desperate for and then using that against them to get them to do things that they don't wanna do is manipulation. And when I finally was able to move in with my sister six months later, that's when the possessiveness truly, truly kicked into high gear. It was full-fledged hysteria. I constantly had to prove where I was to him. And even if I replied to one of his text messages, not even, not even two minutes later, if I replied just a little bit too late for him, he would start accusing me of cheating on him or not being where I said I was. It got to the point where I barely made any sort of attempt at all to have friends or do anything with friends because it just wasn't worth the stress of it all. And something that he would blame this on later when I brought it up to him was that he was cheated on. So that's why he treated me like that. Well, dude, and besides this, every time that I actually just stayed inside instead of going out or trying to live or trying to hang out with friends, he would call me such a good girl. And that was the validation that I truly craved and truly wanted. And I felt it for just that instant. And it was enough to keep me around. And not only keep me around, but keep me fully obsessed with the idea of trying to get this man to love me when truly he cannot love anyone. But even when I did stay inside, that was never enough for him. It was never enough to just be inside and not do anything. He would still accuse me of cheating on him. Like if I got up at work at 8 a.m. to go to Albertsons, I worked all day and then I skateboarded home for an hour to come home and I was tired, I could not go to sleep because every night this man would be awake until like four in the morning and if I dared go to sleep before him, boom, I'm a cheater. Like boom, I'm accused of cheating and it was as if he controlled everything, even my sleep, even my time here on earth, just completely distorted and manipulated by this man. It was insane. And it's totally the reason why I have eye bags today because every night, I shit you not, no matter what time I did go to work tomorrow, no matter what I had to do, no matter what time I got up, I will wait for him to go to sleep so that he will be satisfied and not call me a whore, basically. When I was 19, I fell even more in love with skateboarding. Skateboarding had always been like a little hobby of mine that I enjoyed, but I had never successfully like achieved doing some tricks before. And unfortunately, me actually doing some of these tricks is some of like the only proud moments I've felt in my life, like doing an ollie, doing a shove it, um, ollieing off of something, going into a bowl, like, these are some of the few times I've ever felt proud of myself, but it made it very hard for me to skate because he never liked me going anywhere where men might be. If men even might be there, I was, I had no business being there because I might cheat and he knew how guys are. Around the same time, I started to really feel this crushing sensation around me and felt like I couldn't breathe and there was like nothing that I could do to like satisfy this guy. I felt every aspect of my life being controlled 
and curated and that's a feeling that I only just stopped knowing recently when I finally left him for good. He also destroyed my self-esteem by making off-handed comments about my body that I realized at the age of 19 was still developing. You are still a teenager when you're 19. You're not done growing. You're not a woman or a man or a full grown they them yet. You're just a kid still, honestly. And you don't, you, you're not gonna realize this until you're in your 20s, okay? You're not going to, but 19, you are still very naive. If you're 19 right now, please, for the love of God, do not listen to anyone's bullshit. Do not listen to anyone's bullshit and just enjoy it. Please enjoy it. Enjoy being young. Do not let somebody who's supposed to be your significant other ruin that for you because you will regret it. You are a perfectly beautiful young person who deserves respect. Now please demand that respect. I'm begging you. I do not want to see anybody who follows me, anybody who sees this, I do not want this happening to you. And if something like this is happening to you, my DMs are open for me to talk to you. Although I'm going to be listing professional resources for you to look at as well. Cause I'm only one person, you know, but I will try to answer any kind of DMs pertaining to these subjects. The other self-esteem destroying things that he did to me included not holding my hand, not touching me, hugging me, kissing me, or anything like that outside of being in bed together. And usually if we were in bed cuddling or doing anything, this was because he had the intention of having sex with me. So basically this reiterated to me that I was only good for having sex, that my body was to be judged by older men and that I was not meant to be loved, to be hugged, to be touched and caressed and like, to have a normal relationship that I was just here to be, to put it crassly, fucked, which is so fucking disgusting. And all this would go on while he would reiterate to me so many times all these things about his ex-girlfriend that he cheated on me with, the one that's an adult, the one that mocked me as I was a teenager. He would talk about her so often that I not only knew her birthday, I not only knew how she had sex or how she shaved her vagina, like I knew everything about this girl because of how obsessed he was with talking about her to me and making me insecure about my body and myself just for, for shits and giggles. Something that he did not once, not twice, not three times was go on his phone and ask, Hey Siri, who's my girlfriend? And Siri every time would answer blank, the girl's name. And each time he did it to make me feel lower and lower. It felt like a never ending competition with myself to be the better girl, to be the better girlfriend. How can I be better? How can I be as good as this girl? That's, that's how it felt. So it was this same year that I was 19 that I rebelled against him a bit. I finally rebelled. I went to a Halloween party without telling him. I went with like my girl skateboarder friends. It was very, very innocent, but it was like a skate party and there was a ramp and everything. And because there were skaters there, there was somebody who knew Edward and DM'd him and like tattled on me and was basically like, oh, your girlfriend's here. Why aren't you here? And that still, okay, I'm sorry. It still gets me pissed off to this day that I finally got the courage to disobey him. And somebody ratted me out, like, come on. On, man. Needless to say, I got in big trouble with him over this. When he found out, he called me a dog and a bitch and accused me of cheating on him, of course. Although the very next night, he still drove out to see me in his car so that we could have sex together in his car. And during sex with him this time, he randomly knelt down to my vagina and sniffed it. And he started saying, your pussy smells like condom. And I felt so confused and so grossed out and like violated by this. I scooted away from him and I was like, what? are you talking about? And he said, your pussy smells like condom. I know you cheated on me. It smells like condom. And he of course started calling me a bitch, a dog, a whore, all of this, all of this stuff. And I just couldn't even deal with it. I just got out of the car and just started screaming. I literally, it was because of situations like this that I literally started doubting my own reality. I started questioning myself. I was like, 
did I cheat on him? Even knowing that I had not cheated on him, I questioned to myself, did I? Like, what have I done wrong? Like, it, it seriously felt like reality based on how much anger and force he was putting behind his words. These are some things that make me feel compellingly bad for my younger self. Like, I feel so bad for her because she was so beautiful and so naive and just so easily taken advantage of and humiliated. And I would do anything to help my younger self. I would do anything to change that because of how much pain it is. It, it's so painful to see older pictures of me, honestly, because of everything that I was going through. I don't even see myself as that person anymore. It's so depersonalizing and I don't even know. I, I felt like I, did, I have not known who I am for a while. And this is something that I discussed with my therapist. I feel like I'm figuring it out. And he has tried to assure me that I am the same person, that I am still my younger self, you know? but with trauma and baggage. So it's just some something for you to think about if you have been through something like this is that you still are yourself and you always will be and nobody can take that away from you. When we started a YouTube channel together, he began pressuring me into taking very provocative thumbnails that I wasn't comfortable with and I told him that I wasn't comfortable with this. And each time I would try to tell him, he would say something along the lines of, you're so lucky you're a girl. If I was a girl, I would sell my body. You're so lucky that you have this option. One of these videos that I just wanna mention really quick that has been privated, but I know there's some people out there that may remember it or recall having seen it, was called Hot Girl Plays Claw Machine in Bra, in which I lose a challenge at a claw machine and because of that am then forced to take my dress part way off and show my bra. And in the video, I feel that you could see that I was quite uncomfortable. There was a thumbnail of me in my bra and um, I don't know, just makes me sad. It got to the point where I would be bent over at claw machines and stuff like this in public. And he would he would say more, more, bend over more, more, more and more provocatively, show more boobs, show this, show that. And it would literally get to the point where I would cry. Like there have been times where I have cried taking a provocative thumbnail. And when that happened, he would get mad and just say, you always make me out to be the bad guy. We're still talking at about age 19. It was when all this was going on with the provocative thumbnails and stuff, I began venting to a guy on Instagram about this. And it started off as a friendship. Um, I was not allowed to have friendships with males, of course, so this was a secret. And it eventually developed into me having a crush on him. So after a few weeks of talking, I decided to tell Edward that I was interested in somebody else and that I think we should break up because of that. And when I told him this, I remember we were outside of a skate park and he began banging the steering wheel with his hands and telling me he couldn't believe this because he'd done so much for me. He had done so much for me, he couldn't understand how I could be interested in somebody else and that it was so cruel and so heartless. He he also began love bombing the crap out of me and started confessing to me how much he loved me and how much he had taken me for granted and how he's so sorry he should have been a better boyfriend. So instead of breaking up, we ended up having sex. And not to be so graphic and, and crass, but during the previous two years of our relationship, every time that we had had sex, there was no... There was no mistakes being made. He every single time pulled out without mistake in order to not get me pregnant, of course. It was just the procedure. There was never any close calls, no mistake whatsoever. This time he came inside me intentionally. And I think he did this because I was breaking up with him. And he knew that he needed to do something to get me to stay. And as soon as that happened, I felt so disgusted and violated and hopeless. I immediately told him, why did you do that? Like, and I started panicking. And his explanation for this was that he wanted to show me how much he loved me, that he loved me so much that he didn't even care if he got me pregnant. I perfectly vocalized that I was disgusted by this 
and the next day I went to Planned Parenthood because I didn't know what to do. Like I wasn't on birth control. I wasn't on anything. And so I asked them what I should do and they told me that I was in a weird spot in my cycle. So they thought the morning after pill most likely would not work for me and that I should get an IUD for perfect measure, you know, and I didn't even know what an IUD was, an IUD was prior to this. And um, basically what it is, is like a little T thing and they take a speculum and they put it all the way up in your vagina and it prevents pregnancy with like a 99.9% .9 .9 rate, okay? But I said yes to this and it was one of the most painful experiences of my life, both emotionally and physically, because first of all, it's fucking painful physically. And secondly, I was having to do this against my own will, basically, because I didn't want to get pregnant and I didn't ask to try for, I didn't ask for somebody to try and impregnate me. And that's the only reason why I did it. So on my way out of this planned parenthood, it was my ex who showed up with roses and I asked him what are you doing here honestly what are you doing here and he acted very insulted by that and I I just can't express to you enough how not okay I was with this and I wish to god that I could cry I can't I haven't cried in several months I can't get it out um I wish that I could cry I can't. For anyone unaware, stealthing somebody is a form of sexual assault. It's not okay to do that without the person's permission. It's violating their autonomy and their choice to decide if they want to be pregnant or not. So my advice to you, if anybody has done this to you and you're in a relationship with them or you're not in a relationship with them, please get help or leave that person because it's a violation. I seriously felt that I needed to escape. And the next night was New Year's Eve. So what I did was I sent him a breakup text basically. And I told him I can't do this anymore. And I blocked him on all social media. I blocked his phone number. And the guy that I had had a crush on and vented all of my abuse, abusive issues to was there for me and saying, come over here, I'll treat you right, I promise. I would never do any of that to you. And so I went to his house that night. Me and I were broken up after this for two weeks at most, during which he would frequently hook up with the ex that was okay with me being underage. This is just me reiterating that the adults around me and him have known about this and didn't care. And basically what happened with me and the boy that I had had a crush on was that um, basically after he got what he wanted from me, he began gaslighting me and making me feel like I was crazy for wanting to date him and was literally hiding me from his ex-girlfriend, which I'm pretty sure now was literally just his girlfriend and that he cheated on her with me. Um, so I realized that I was used and I felt even more hopeless because all of this had just happened to me. And then again, I was used by another man. And I started realizing that all I wanted was just to prove that I was good enough. I just wanted to prove I was good enough to be loved by this man. This man who had picked me up at the age of 17 and had never made me feel like a human being. I just wanted him to make me feel like a human being because there were times where we would have fun together and stuff and it would be all good and then he would snatch it away. And this is just, it's abuse. It's abuse to play the push pull with somebody so that they are essentially your perfect grooming victim. So many people have asked me, if he groomed you, why did you stay with him? Please understand what grooming is before you come to me with a question like that. Please do. Grooming is a process that you cannot leave. You do not understand it enough to leave while you are in it. I explained that I had been used by another boy on New Year's Eve to my ex 
And it was at that point that he told me, listen, all men use women. And he tried to warn me about that fact. He tried to get me to stay with him because he was the only one who wouldn't disrespect me like that. Oh, the irony. He also told me that there was really no point of me exploring the world outside of our relationship as a single person because he had done everything that single people have done. He has done all the parties and gone everywhere and he knows that it's really not all that fun. And he would say, trust me, watch. When you're single, you're gonna find out that nothing really is that fun or cool and then you're gonna feel so sad and come running back to me. And he was one of two adults in my life that gave me any guidance. The other one was my sister and I hid all of this from her basically because I didn't want her to worry about me. So I was listening to my ex. I was listening to his guidance. I thought to myself, well, he's older. He is more experienced. So he must be right, right? He then invited me on a spontaneous trip to Vegas. And I was at the time feeling hopeless, disgusted with myself, blaming myself for all the abuse that happened to me, feeling like crap from being used. I felt like I wasn't going anywhere in life at all. And this seemed like the best option for me. So I agreed to go on this spontaneous trip with him to Las Vegas by his standards. What he told me was just to see what would happen. But honestly, it was just another case of love bombing during this trip. During this trip, all he would do was just love bomb me or we would be violently arguing, like screaming at each other, literally screaming at each other on the freaking strip. I also agreed to go on this trip because I had slim to no friends left. Most of my friends abandoned me because they grew tired of me talking about my toxic relationship. They, go, they grew tired of me being so vulnerable and constantly being kicked around and worrying about me. They didn't wanna have to worry about me anymore, which I can see it from their perspective, but honestly, my advice to everybody who has a friend out there that's getting abused or that's getting groomed, do not stop talking to them. Do not stop talking to them because the minute you stop talking to them, the more reason there is for them to be in that relationship. The more they feel alone and the more isolated they feel, the more hopeless it all is, the more likely they're gonna stay in that relationship for more and more years. They're gonna stay in that relationship maybe even forever. And if you don't want that for them, then please don't abandon all hope. Do not abandon your friends who are going through this stuff. When we came back from Las Vegas, we continued the YouTube channel. And from there on out, we accumulated a lot of adult viewers who were there for the sexualized thumbnails of me. And um, we would live stream and these older men, a lot of them at least, would also sexualize me to my face. This was just another thing that reiterated to me who I was as a young person, which at the time, I thought it was just somebody who was there to look good enough to entice men. We never did anything for this YouTube channel that I planned or desired to do. And this same behavior translated outside of just our working together as well. Our relationship was not based on anything that I wanted to do or planned to do or wanted to show him. All of my interests were stupid to him. All of my interests were mocked by him. He never wanted me to show him any movies, songs, like videos, any anything, you name it, because that's how invalid my opinion was. And, and this may seem like not a big deal, but it so is. It's such a weird form of control and minimizing the person that you're with and treating them like your interests are the only ones that are valid and what you want to do are the only things that are worth doing. It's just so toxic. I had completely given up on sharing any of my interests with him for fear of humiliation, really. Everything that we did together was curated off of his interests and only the things that he wanted me to see. I would work at Target daily while he would be off live streaming for this YouTube channel, the arcade one. And we began making enough decent money on these videos and streams to the point where I could have quit my job. But he told me that I couldn't because he wanted to teach me a lesson and teach me the meaning of real work. 
Day three of trying to finish filming this. This is the most put together I've been out of all these days, I guess because I've spent the least amount of time on social media within this 24 hour time frame. So I am feeling very normal. And let's just say after I post this video, I am gonna go AWOL for several days. I'm gonna delete all my social media apps. So I'm sorry if you can't contact me for those few days, but I'm just trying to keep myself from spiraling, which honestly, every time I film part of this video, I do spiral a bit and that's why I've had to kind of split it up amongst several days. So where was I? He kept having me do these hypersexualized thumbnails on both YouTube and Instagram, which it's kind of really funny that he treated me like scum and like I wasn't shit when at the same time he was using me for these clickbaited views. And another thing that I've really observed is that he had bullied me into honestly downplaying my own personal style, like taking it down a few notches. And I'll show you some pictures as an example because just how much he put it into my mind that all of my interests and what I did and how I did it was total crap. The irony that now a lot of people always tell me they love the way I dress or they love the way I do my makeup and stuff. So when the pandemic hit, I felt more trapped and isolated than ever. And I think this is something that we saw a lot with people's relationships during the pandemic. Everybody kind of realized something about whoever they ended up locked down with. And for me, I was already coming under like the realization that this is like seriously like abuse what's happening to me. And I just did not know what to do about it whatsoever because we were already this glorified couple. Like it may come as a surprise but even before the memes popped off and we got popular on TikTok, we were already this glorified couple that um, thought that we were just so perfect together. And I have, honestly have no idea why, because looking back, he was constantly speaking over me in every video, speaking over me in every live stream. Like I kind of don't understand how people didn't really notice. That's a whole other story, honestly. I think only people who have really been through abuse or witnessed it already can like detect it when they see, when they see it happening. So as the pandemic kicked off, I really started rationalizing to myself, like why am I in this relationship? I, at the time, didn't have enough money in my account to like comfortably move out and pay to have all my stuff moved. I didn't have a car. I still don't have a car. And not only that, I also knew that it would be harder than ever during a freaking pandemic. It was just terrifying. I was also, of course, just genuinely scared of the pandemic like everybody else was. I really thought to myself, am I going to die without ever having felt love from somebody who hasn't abused me? Like, is that really what's gonna happen? Am I gonna die with my abuser? And the whole relationship turned especially and aggressively rocky during this lockdown. This was mainly, but not limited to the fact that we both have insanely different views when it comes to political matters. Matters that shouldn't even be political, to be honest with you. Cause this is regarding human rights. And in my eyes, human rights are not political. It's just, are you a good person or are you a bad person, honestly? So basically, I found out that the person I was dating and in stuck in this house with, stuck in this godforsaken apartment with, was an absolute bootlicker. And I found this out at the absolute worst time because there was nowhere to go, everything was closed, there was just abandon hope all ye who enter earth right now. It was a total hellscape. And I'm sorry if this sounds petty, but the most egregious part of all of this to me was the fact that he would make fun of me so aggressively for supporting the Black Lives Matter movement while at the same time posting his how he's an ally on his story on Instagram, which goes hand in hand with his entire personality, honestly, because if you believe anything he's telling you for one second, just know that he's a great actor. And that is what we got famous for after all, right? That because he's such a good actor. Like every day I would wake up and have to prepare myself with like a whole fact sheet so that I could argue with him. And it, it didn't even matter because every single time I brought up an excellent point for my perspective, he would completely ignore it and just loop back to his bootlicking self. Like, I don't know, I'm sorry, maybe this is a little petty, 
but I think it actually is necessary to include this because of just how much of his online persona is absolutely fabricated. I felt totally disgusted by his rationalization of police violence and I made that very clear to him so much so that I told him I was disgusted with him at which point he said that he was just kidding and he was saying it to get on my head something that he always loved to say whenever he said something totally obnoxious and not okay i kind of had to rationalize this to myself as some kind of like totally senile sense of self-hatred he'd say i'm just kidding and i just wanted you to shut up and I'm part black, so I can say whatever I want. This just didn't sit well with me. It just does not sit well with me. It doesn't. I spent weeks ignoring his sexual advances, but every time I was unresponsive to his advances, he would guilt trip the ever living shit out of me. So I started spending like two plus hours every night in the shower trying to avoid this whole confrontation because at the end of the day, once he whittled me down enough, once he guilt tripped me enough and made me feel bad for making him feel insecure, I would just be like, okay, fine. And I, I would do it. And I would just be go grossed out the whole time. Leaving was also such a scary prospect because this was the first stable home I ever had, the one that we had together. But if I had any good sense, honestly, I would have realized that this was the opposite of stable and this relationship was not worth having a home or a job. But he was very smart to dangle those things over my head because he knew I wanted stability. I really realized that this guy was obligatorily the opposite of me in every way possible. I hated everything that he stood for. So why am I still here? Why do I keep doing this? Because every time I try to tell him what he's doing wrong, he gaslights me into thinking that I'm the one who's wrong. Here I am literally realizing that I hate this person that I live with. I hate this person that I work with. And I hate him for trying to get me pregnant at 19 for just for trying to leave him. I realized all of this and I didn't know what the fuck to do about it. I posted every goddamn day on my story. I'm so depressed. I want to kill myself. I didn't, I didn't even care. Like literally I, I would just shit post about how sad I was. Meanwhile, he wouldn't care because he obligatorily did not care how I actually felt as long as I was there to be used to his benefit for whatever it may be for sex, for thumbnails, for content, for filming, to bully, to make himself feel like a little bigger as long as i was there for that then that's fine you can be suicidal you suicidal you suicidal you suicidal you suicidal i'm sorry i'm i can joke about this i have to joke about this because if not i think i might totally lose my mind. So all the arcades were closed due to the pandemic. So our content had to drastically change in order to try to stay afloat and maintain this YouTube channel that was, you know, already our career. We just wanted to make sure that we had enough to keep paying rent every month, regardless of like what was going on in the world. There was money saved up from YouTube that went directly into his bank account via Google AdSense, which if you don't know, Google AdSense AdSense is how you get paid through YouTube. You get paid through the ads that get clicked on in a video. Anytime I brought up getting paid by him semi-regularly, like being on some kind of paycheck system, anytime I tried to bring that up, he would act like I was the total dickhead and a total money-hungry moron, as if I wasn't there every day with him, working alongside him, holding the camera, helping out, acting. Being in the thumbnail, like, he has tried to make everybody think that I'm like this weird gold digging person recently. And it's like, dude, like you do know I was also in the video, right? Like I, I was always behind the camera. I was always in the goddamn costumes and everything. Like I don't understand why it's a bad thing for me to want the money that I was owed from the channel, from working on the channel with him. And also just suffrage, dude, like repent. Give me money, fuck you. I don't care, you can say I'm a gold digger, but I literally worked alongside him and I wanted the money because all the money was going to 
his account and it was up to him to write me a check and give it to me at the end of our relationship which honestly i know he dragged that out so much he dragged it out so much but we'll get to that but yes if i bothered him enough he would send me money through paypal so i i'm not saying he never gave me money i'm not saying that i'm just saying that he did guilt trip the hell out of me for wanting a somewhat stable paying system. In fact, when the YouTube channel started, I really, really had to fight for him to deposit any of the money to my account at all. He said, oh, if you want anything, because I, I got fired from Target, so I didn't have income coming in anymore. And he said to me, no, no, if you need anything, I'll just buy it for you. And I, I told him, honestly, I don't wanna ask you for everything that I buy. Like, I don't wanna need like tampons and shit and be like, can you please buy me tampons? like what kind of shit is that like and I'm working with you in fact I felt more like his daughter or his co-worker or both than being his actual girlfriend the wholesome cringe content was born out of Chuck E. Cheese going through a bankruptcy so basically we saw it was going through a bankruptcy I posted a video about it on this channel to test the waters and see if it would do good and it did so on the main channel we pretty much milked the crap out of it and the rest is honestly history we eventually went viral on TikTok but did you know that just one week prior to us going viral on TikTok, I tried to break up with Edward. I tried to break up with him. I told him, honestly, I can't do this anymore because every day that I'm with you, I am not healing from the wounds that you have created for me. But just like always, he convinced me to stay. And then boom, the next week we were all over the internet with everybody calling us couple goals and saying we're so cute together and so perfect together. We were a totally glorified turd of a relationship. All eyes were on us and observing us. Like everybody was scrolling through each one of our Instagram posts, looking at all the, every single comment, trying to find out if we're problematic basically. And my ex aggressively told me that I need to go through all of my posts and make sure there's not any pictures of us together from when I was a minor or any comments or anything. So I archived everything but one thing and I honestly did it on purpose. I kept one thing up on purpose and it was a picture of two birds hugging and he was tagged in the photo and it was from 2016 early 2016 aka when i was a minor but it was such a hidden thing it, it was something that you would not notice unless you were extremely investigative which in a weird way i wanted it to be exposed i wanted it to be all over with and final i secretly wanted to see this whole thing crumble to the ground and you know what somebody actually did find that post and made a TikTok about it saying that basically there's just no way like I had to have been a minor when we started going out and when he found out about this he was pissed and he forced me to leave a comment saying that no this isn't true this is a lie which basically is honestly dumb that anybody even uses that comment as proof because literally the whole TikTok is proof irrefutably so that we at the very least knew each other or were flirting or something when I was a minor. Like, how can you use that comment that he forced me to put there as proof when the TikTok itself is irrefutable evidence? And if you still wanna fight me, I have so much more evidence. I posted it on Instagram, but the, I, I truly do believe that the reason why people are willing to ignore blatant evidence is just cause they, they don't want to lose their parasocial little buddy. But basically, when I left that post up instead of archiving it, I, I know it sounds stupid, but I hope that somebody would just hear my invisible screams. I wanted somebody to hear my invisible pleas to get me out of this because I was having trouble getting out of it myself. In fact, I honestly thought that I might not ever be able to do this at all. It seemed impossible. And when we were blowing up, he actively wanted me to play into this whole concept of us being couple goals. For instance, one story comes to mind where he's feeding me ramen and looking at me like lovingly. And I remember right before we filmed that, he said, let's do this. They'll love it if we do this. It was literally so fake. So much of this is so 
fake. It was so orchestrated and I felt so used because as his girlfriend, I had not received this kind of treatment before. Like, I, I really didn't. So then, around two and a half months ago, I was in the bathroom, minding my own business, getting ready, and th this is when he comes up to me, and he says to me, there's this lesbian girl who keeps messaging me, and it's getting kind of annoying, and she's asking me for relationship advice, so I told her that she should ask you instead because she's a big fan of both of us. Honestly, it was a very weird statement. So I kind of didn't even know what to say about it. I was just like, okay, like what's what's her ad, I guess. And so I, I looked up the ad and I saw that it was true that she was a fan of me and you know, both of us. And this person ended up being my friend Anu, who you might know, I went with her to New York. But yeah, we started talking to each other and we really hit it off. We really started becoming friends. And after a few days of talking to each other, she mentioned to me that she felt kind of weird about how Edward left things off with her because apparently prior to me knowing about her, they had been talking to each other for a while. And right before he connected us to each other, he told her that he was gonna unfollow her and pretend like they weren't talking. So this struck me as totally weird and like behavior of somebody with like a very guilty mind. Like why would you need to unfollow her and act like you guys weren't friends? Like very, very weird. Cause I never told him that he couldn't have friends or female friends. It was him who always controlled who I could talk to. Anu also stated that she was not a lesbian as he claimed and she was pansexual. So like, that's another thing. Why did you lie about that? So I obviously confronted him about this. I was like, so why did you lie about her sexuality and why did you purposefully unfollow her? Like, this is very weird behavior. And in response to this, he went, well, she didn't have up all those slutty pictures of herself when I followed her, which the pictures are not slutty, okay? They're not, they're fucking, they're, they're pictures of her looking absolutely gorgeous and anybody can post what they want and they are not slutty for that. But a bunch of these pictures that are quote unquote slutty to him were in fact up during the time that they were talking and during the time that he followed her. So I'm like, okay, so you're lying about that too. Interesting. Just another reason for me to hate you, honestly, to hate your stinking guts. <laughs> and he also told me that he wanted a girl to talk to about our relationship problems. And I'm like, Dude, you don't even talk to me about our relationship problems. Like how are you gonna go looking for another girl to discuss issues with that you don't even discuss with me if that if that makes sense. You know what I mean? He then proceeded to force me to look through like all their messages, which I honestly just skimmed them. But there was literally a bunch of messages that I saw where he went out of his way to talk to her. Like even after he unfollowed her, he went the extra step to go to her profile and send her another message. All the while he was was claiming that she was annoying and blowing up his phone. Okay, if she's blowing up your phone, why are you going out of your way to talk to her still? Like, make it make sense. Gaslighty! Anu is one of my favorite people in the world. She treats every person with the same kindness and hospitality no matter who they are or where they are. She also expressed to me that she was so excited that a creator that she admired was wanting to be a homie with her. And I really strongly believe that my ex misinterpreted this as flirting, especially since Anu is on the autistic spectrum. I feel like he didn't quite understand how or why anybody would ever be so friendly and just sweet without wanting anything in return, but just an earnest friendship. But this shouldn't even surprise me because he doesn't believe that men and women can be friends, which is absolute horseshit. So I ended up spilling my guts about him to her and she ended up really, really validating my feelings on all of this abuse that had occurred. And Anu told me, listen, you really need to get out of this. You're saying that you are going to kill yourself because of this relationship. Do not let your abuser have you kill yourself. Do not die for your abuser and she told me hey i'm going to new york in october and i'm gonna meet up with a bunch of girlfriends 
you should come with me. I think it would be really good for you because we're all gonna be there for you and we're all gonna support you. And I spontaneously said yes, because I knew in my heart of hearts that I truly, truly wanted to go. And I also knew that I did not want to be with my ex. I tried to quit the channel a few days after agreeing to this trip and he made it clear that it was honestly a job that was unquittable. I told him that I wanted to follow my dreams and work on Nikki Land and Crime O'Clock and that I couldn't stand working with him anymore because he was such a tyrant that sucked the fun out of everything and the fun out of life and then always literally shat on every idea that I had and then pretended as if I was the most unhelpful person in the world and as if I wasn't doing anything when literally anytime I would try to suggest things he hated it. It was a constant fight to inject my humor into these videos. Like I was lucky if I got one or two lines that he agreed to let me, let me put in the videos when it's supposed to be both of our channel. And my vision for the jokes was always way more nihilistic than his and a bit more bizarre. He said, okay, you know what? You can take a few weeks off. And when you come back, I'll actually listen to what you have to say, I promise. But honestly, I was so over it at this point that I couldn't give a shit. The only thing that I gave a shit about, and I still do, is the fans of the channel that still appreciate me and treat me like a human being and are just there and are supportive of everything I've been there for. Like I have so many great, awesome interactions that I'm so grateful for and all these awesome people that came out of that channel. I love the fans. I, I appreciate the fans and I'm sorry if I never communicated as much as I should have, but I was also going through all this abuse while doing these videos. So the fact that he now tries to say that, oh, I hate the channel and I talk crap about the channel. Dude, come on. You stalked me on one live stream where I said arcade cranny ass and you're gonna use that against me. You know I said that because I was totally suffering during the whole era of the cranny ass. I was just suffering. I, w I mean, I have a lot of bad memories having to do with it. I, it's not that I don't like the fans. I love the fans. I never said I don't love the fans. And I appreciate you who are watching this so much, especially those of you who are not calling me an asshole and a whore for leaving my groomer. I especially appreciate you because you're very empathetic. Thank you. So I tried to break up with him like four times in a row around the same time. And each time he was like, no, which is like, honestly, so stupid that it's like comical almost and he would sit next to me and plead and beg for hours even after I said no I do not want to give you another chance no I do not want to give it another month no I do not want to see how well you think you can treat me no I don't want you to try to understand my interests now it's been five years I do not want you to try now I don't but he knew because of us living and working together that it would be very hard for me and so he tried his ultimate best to make that pleading ever so empathetic. I confronted him about everything. That's something you also have to understand. Everyone's like, why didn't you handle this in private? I did, <laughs> I did. I confronted him about this so many times. I told him, hey, I don't wanna be with you because you groomed me, you sexually assaulted me, you took advantage of me, you used me, and also, I don't want to be with anybody who tried to choke me out. Unfortunately, I do have to mention this. One time, he was so pissed at me that he punched me a bunch of times in the arm so hard that it literally turned black and blue. Like, for several weeks, my arm was black and blue. And he grabbed me by my throat and shoved my head against the wall of our apartment and threatened to hit me again. As I was in that position, his arm was like up. His other arm was up. He realized that he was being insane, I think, and he let me go and I ran outside of our apartment so fast. I didn't even have shoes on. I grabbed a pair of shoes by the door and I, went outside by uh, the parking garage gate and I was looking through my phone thinking, who can I call? Who can I text? Like, who can come get me? Cause can anybody help me? And I couldn't think of not one name at the time. And that was one of my lowest, lowest moments. I had to wear a jacket every day to cover up these bruises. And we were filming at like carnival games and stuff around this time, around the time that this happened. And 
I remember he was trying to take a thumbnail of me one of these days and he said, take off your jacket. And of course he wanted me to take off my jacket so I can show my boobs more, get more of that clickbait in there. And I had to silently like signal to him like, hey, like my, my arm is still messed up. And he just seemed insanely frustrated by that. He was like pissed and I was just like, well, man, you're the one who did it to me. The thing that you must understand about my ex and just abusers in general is that they will have an explanation for every fucked up thing they do to you. And they'll try to make it sound as plausible and logical and rational as humanly possible. His justification for me confronting him about grooming me was who knows where you would be right now in life without me? Who knows? Maybe at one of those shows that you liked to go to back then, you would have got raped or you would have gotten murdered or something who knows maybe i saved you or maybe you would have even gotten addicted to drugs if i if it weren't for me and if our age difference is so bad then why is it legal in new york why is the age of consent 17 in new york uh, again i have to say it's about the power imbalance it is about the power imbalance it is about the grooming it is about the manipulation if if the only thing Keeping you from dating a teenager is the law. Please seek help. You are sick. His justification for having hit me and choked me was that I hit him too. And the incident that he was referring to was a time where he was driving drunk in the car with me in it, speeding, acting like he was going to drive us off of a cliff because he was so pissed and he had punched this pizza box that was in my lap so hard that it was mangled and there was like holes in it. There was holes in it. And he was screaming, hitting himself in the head drunk and saying, hit me, hit me, hit me. And the fight was about him bringing up his ex again to make me insecure, by the way. At this point, he had already hit me before and choked me like I was telling you about. So, Yes, I hit him in the leg and it wasn't enough to do damage, but I do regret it because I hate violence and I don't think that's okay. I don't think it's okay. And I feel deep shame for even doing that. For even doing that, I feel fucking deep shame. And for that, I fucking apologize. And I'm a piece of shit for that. I shouldn't have fucking did that. But in all honesty, it was not enough to do any damage. And I did it because I was fucking scared. I'm not a violent individual. In fact, I don't even like yelling at people or anything like that. If you, if you get me to the point where I'm yelling at you, you have done something seriously despicable because I do not yell at people, let alone hit them, let alone choke them either. Try to choke them, try to kill them. But one thing he didn't have an excuse for was the IUD incident, the SA incident. He honestly just ignored that I said that. Anytime I brought that up to him, he just completely ignored it. And I think it's cause that's something despicable that even he has the self-awareness to understand is a bit despicable. He did agree that he took advantage of me when I was very young because he knew that I was a good girl and would do everything that he said, his words, not mine. He also threatened to kill himself multiple times during these times when I was breaking up with him. One time in particular, he threatened to kill himself and walked over to the kitchen to get a kitchen knife and held it to his wrist. And I said, you're not gonna do that. You're scared of death. And I was right, he didn't do it. So, hey, if, if somebody is trying to use this tactic on you, saying they're gonna kill themselves, if you're just cause you're trying to break up with them, fuck that, it's not your problem. And they're not gonna do it, by the way. They don't feel guilt for what they're doing. They're not as, they're not self-aware enough to feel guilt for what they're doing. So no, they are not going to kill themselves. They're saying that, so you'll stay with them. Cause they know you're a good person and you would care if they died, even though what they did to you was wrong. So he took me on all these like elaborate dates during December, trying to like prove to me that it would all be different. It could all be like this forever if you just stayed. All the while I had this haunting anxiety about my upcoming trip that he had no idea about. And I was also secretly looking at all these apartments to move out to because I realized that 
I was gonna be, I was gonna have to be the one to move out because he was never gonna let me break up with him or like get out. Like I couldn't even get him to agree with the breakup, let alone get out of the house. So I realized I was gonna have to do this in secret because he would fight me every step of the way if he knew. I told him that it shouldn't have taken five years and all this abuse just to get him to take me on some corny ass dates that I had always wanted to do. I'm sorry, that's not good enough. One of our last nights together, he attempted to give me a promise ring which i told him honestly i can't accept that because i don't want to be with you and honestly tomorrow morning i have an appointment to go see an apartment that i already signed part of the papers for i told him i wanted a chance to feel love from somebody who wasn't an abuser one day that same night he went through my phone while I was sleeping and found out about my New York trip. He tried every tactic possible to stop me from going to see my apartment and to stop me from going to New York. He literally tried to convince me that Anu was insane and trying to kill me in some kind of Selena-esque weird murder plot. He began blaming everything on Anu, going as far as screaming, throwing his phone at the wall and saying, that fucking bitch, I fucking hate her. Saying shit like that and trying to convince me over and over again that all of these thoughts, me wanting to break up with him, Everything was put into my mind by Anu. Anu is the one who is making you think this. She's the one. Like, he was trying to invalidate the way that I felt so much. I tried to explain, please, can you at least give me credit for my own thoughts? I wanted to break up before I even knew Anu. But he was so convinced that if I hadn't met her, that I, we would have been in this amazing, happy, turd of a fake, happy relationship forever. Something he frequently said whenever I got close to a friend and told them about his behavior, and they were like, yo, that's awful behavior, was, this is why I don't want you talking about me to your friends. He does not want anyone to know about his behavior, because. Deep down, he knows he's doing something wrong. He doesn't care about the moral aspects of it. He just hates being confronted about it. Classic, classic abusive behavior. The last night when I came to pack my bags for New York, he loomed over me the whole entire time I was packing, pleading, begging, crying, threatening to kill himself. He even pretended to have a heart attack. Yeah. He literally pretended to have a heart attack, I swear to God. And maybe I'm a little evil for saying this, but it was honestly a little funny. I was standing at my closet getting stuff out and he kept trying to convince me that Anu is evil, she's brainwashing you, blah, 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 blah. And so I, I got pissed and I ended up yelling at him. Like I said, it takes a lot for me to yell, but I was yelling. And this is what he did, he went, <laughs> <laughs> and he like ran to the bed in the living room and threw himself on it and was like <gasps> and uh, I just ignored it because I was like I don't know what the hell to do about this I'm I, I have tickets to go to New York tomorrow so I don't know what to do about this and so I ignored it and what do you know, just a few minutes later, he comes back and acts like it didn't happen. The tactics that abusers have are going to be relentless. I'm not gonna lie to you, it's not gonna be easy to leave your abuser. I'm not gonna lie, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. However, once you see through all this bullshit, it will get a lot easier. It will get a lot easier to say no to them. So the last thing that I needed before I could exit the house to go to New York was my vaccination card because you really, really needed in New York to be able to like do anything. And I knew it was in his car. So I went down and this was the day where if you live in California, you might know what I'm talking about, where it was storming like crazy. There was rain, hail, lightning, thunder. It was going insane. Like the rain, I have not seen rain like that in years. It's insane. And uh, my ex noticed this as well and tried to convince me that it was a bad omen. No, trust me. Listen, we're breaking up and it's raining like this and it's hailing like this. It's like the universe.
universe is like telling you not to go to New York. It's, it's like telling you that like something bad's gonna happen to you if you go. <laughs> oh my god, it's so fucking frustrating to think about this. Um, but honestly, it was a crazy intense argument outside with all of this background noise and hail and lightning and everything. It was as if the universe was gifting me this extra dramatic finale to my chaotic bullshit relationship and that's epic i guess thanks universe it wasn't a bad omen definitely not i think it was a good thing it was like cleansing it was like here you go you're doing it good keep going so when i got back up to the apartment i had my destination card i had basically everything i needed so i was like okay i'm going i'm going to my friend's house and they're gonna take me to the airport tomorrow so good and and my sister was waiting for me this whole time outside so she could take me to my friend's house and they could take me to the airport yeah you get you go know what i mean and she was growing increasingly concerned because i was taking so long because my ex physically started blocking the exit like he physically was blocking the door pleading and pleading grabbing my wrist not letting it go holding it so tight that I couldn't pull away just all of this just to keep me to stay in the room with him why because I uh, he can't stand losing the person that he could, could control. I don't know. I, I don't know what it's about. And I, 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 I don't understand abuser mentality, but we can sure try and we can sure try to avoid these kinds of people in the future. So not only was this process insanely hard to deal with, another, a whole nother aspect was the public's reaction to me being in New York. That made the whole thing worse. I posted a simple TikTok even mentioning the idea of a breakup and everybody went crazy. Love isn't real. Nothing is real. You say you're kidding. Get back together. You're in New York fucking people while he's over here crying. First of all, no, not that it matters at all, but no, I was not fucking people. I was trying to find I'm leaving that in. I was trying to find myself and be away from him long enough to get my apartment stuff situated online. Da, 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 da. Another thing is that he tried to manipulate our young audience by going on a live stream and crying. Now imagine if I did that. Imagine if I went on a live stream crying about somebody who I abused for years to get sympathy. Like you are... Okay. <laughs> I, I honestly don't have anything to say about that. Like, the fact that people felt so sympathetic for him. Like, the man is crying about treating me like shit. Like, how do you feel bad about that? Like, he should be crying. So, unfortunately, because I'm a dumbass who was trauma bonded. Well, actually, you know what? I need to not call myself a dumbass. Because guess what? Just because you're abused and you have a trauma bond with your abuser, it doesn't make you a dumbass. It takes time to... Stop letting that person manipulate you a hundred thousand percent. Even if you're you're doing so good, you're so close, you still might fall a little bit. Don't let that discourage you, okay? So let me just tell you right now, I was still in contact with Edward while I was in New York. I would talk to him on the phone sometimes against the plead the pleads from my friends, and understandably so. Let me define a trauma bond for you. A trauma bond is a deep emotional attachment that develops in a relationship characterized by abuse that's emotional, physical, or both. Okay, here we go. And here is what it's like to have a trauma trauma bond with a narcissist. Trauma bonding occurs when a narcissist repeats a cycle of abuse with another person which fuels a need for validation and love from the person being abused. The narcissist will condition somebody into believing these toxic behaviors are normal. So this is this is yet to be determined because I need to discuss this further with my therapist but I also think I suffered from narcissistic victim syndrome is a condition that occurs when a person has been living with or spending a significant amount of time with a narcissist. People who are struggling with narcissistic abuse syndrome often doubt their own self-worth or sanity. Sound familiar? Here's something else. What happens when you don't chase a narcissist, which is what I did, I stopped chasing. Essentially, narcissists thrive on using others as a source to make them feel important, loved, cherished. If you ignore a narcissist and deny them their source, they may become enraged 
and try even harder for your attention, especially in ways that are toxic or abusive. Two, to an absolute T. And it's not, it's not for my lack of trying. I would ignore him for several days at once because I was in New York for over a week. I would ignore him. He would blow up my phone. He would make me feel like shit, sending me all these text messages like, look, our cat, he misses you so much and I miss you so much. It's not fair. How could you do this? Blah, 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 blah. And since I'm a fucking dumbass and a good person, I obliged and I would talk to him, okay? And I talked to him and saw him a few times after I came back, like the first few days that I was in my new apartment. So yes, I let him come into my apartment like a fucking dumbass, and he uses this against me as if it's something that proves anything. You were in my ear manipulating me, trying to pretend that you wanted to be my friend when you didn't want to be my friend, okay? And I know you're watching this. I know you're watching this. You didn't want to be my friend. You wanted something to use against me just in case I ever spoke out about all of this bullshit. I know it because of the way he recorded me passed out drunk kissing my head without freaking consent. It blows my mind how many comments I get in every comment section. Oh, your ex exposed you. No, I think my ex exposed himself by posting that. He recorded me passed out drunk kissing my head and then smiling into the camera does that not does that how is that a good look and then i started ignoring him every day every day he would try to take me out on some kind of date i started ignoring him i was going to halloween parties every night just trying to live it up and also just ignore him i was flirting with people i didn't give a goddamn i was like miserable and I had a great amazing Halloween week. And then I met I met the person that I'm dating right now, Matt, on Halloween, and it was fucking awesome. And I and I sent this narcissistic man a text explaining to him that I didn't want him to blow up my phone anymore, please. <laughs> and stop messaging all my friends and my relatives asking what are my whereabouts? Like stop messaging them, leave them alone too. Because First of all, you're my abuser, and I, I've been trying to ignore you for days anyways. I was ignoring him for straight up like weeks already, and then like I sent him a text like, hey, honestly, I really like somebody, can you leave me alone? And he pretended to be understanding of it, but he would still blow up my phone, still try to FaceTime me, so annoying, honestly. I told him, I need you to give me the check. I need you to give me my share of the channel's money, like you promised, and he obliged. And a lot of people are like, why did you wait so long to speak up about this? Um, maybe because I wanted to make sure that I did not get like conned out of money that I worked alongside him to get. Maybe, maybe because of that, maybe, maybe mm, like a little bit. And also I don't even owe it to anybody to tell anybody this. I'm telling, I'm telling you guys this because I want to help. I want to help people. I would rather die than see somebody else go through this who's like a minor or a, or a young person or a teen. I would literally rather fucking die, dude. It's horrible. It's it's suffering that many people do not understand. It's a, your own personal hell. And if anybody watching this has a sneaking suspicion that this is happening to them at all, do not ignore your gut feeling. I ignored mine for a very long time. Don't ignore it. Ask yourself, why torture yourself any longer? You do not owe your youth to these old ass men. You do not. Someone who attacks you and tries to tear you down emotionally and physically knows that you are too good for them and that you deserve better. Why else would they try to continuously brainwash you? Because they know, they know that you're too good for them. Stop minimizing yourself. And I just pray to God that if this is happening to you, you don't live with them because it does make it that much harder. I'm not gonna lie to you, it does, but I'm telling telling you these years of your life are not worth living in that house with them. It's not worth it. If you weren't actually an amazing person, they wouldn't have to try to shrink you down so you might believe that their stupid stinky ass is deserving of your love, your body, and your time. Sorry, not sorry, it's true. You are better than your abuser in every way, shape, and form. Even if you have to get five roommates, even if you have to temporarily move back in with your parents, please, like, this is not, this is not worth it. Your mind and body 
will take that toll. And if any minor is watching this and they're currently dating somebody in their 20s, please tell somebody about this. It's a crime for a reason. They're taking advantage of you and it's disgusting. And something you really need to think about if you're in the situation is making an exit plan. So this is the only thing that has worked for me after all those years how I finally got out and started living and stopped dying is I had to make an exit plan. And one of the most critical things about this exit plan was that me and my friend Anu put a list together of horrible things that he's done to me. And every time he would make me forget about the horrible things that he's done to me, I would look at the list. Every time he tried to manipulate me, I looked at the list and it reminded me that yes, I do have very good, perfectly valid reasons for leaving this relationship and no one can convince me otherwise. You must make a list of all the things that they have done to you to invalidate you, to put you down, to minimize you with their psychological warfare, the abuse, physical, sexual, or emotional. Every time they try to manipulate you into forgetting what they did, you must remember and it's gonna be painful it's gonna be very painful and i will recommend to you that you do seek out a therapist okay there's lots of great ways to get a therapist and a lot of them accept co-pays and i understand therapy is not always accessible for everyone which is like super fucking lame and unfortunate something that i've done before and this isn't a sponsorship i should be sponsored by them but it's not a sponsorship but i have done the free better help trial before when i didn't have any money and that did help me temporarily but you can also choose to live Choose to live, choose to cherish yourself. I cherish you, I worship you. I don't want this happening to you. There are people that want to help you. No matter what you think, even if you're like, I don't have any friends, what do I do? There's people out there that would help you. There's people out there that would care and want to hear your story. It may take time too. In my case, it took me about six whole months just to like build up the courage to continuously and relentlessly say, I don't wanna do this anymore and keep going even when he made it seem impossible. It took a long time. I, I found people that are positive in my life and validate my experiences and are sweet to me. And that takes time too. It takes time to find that good system of people to help you. But there's people, they are, there are good people out there. I know it seems hopeless sometimes, but there are good people. If you are in an abusive relationship currently or you're suicidal, I'm I'm gonna list a bunch of resources down below to help because although my DMs are open, I am just one person, like I said. I wanna help as much as possible, but I, I do think you need professional resources as well. And if it comes down to it, there's the suicide hotline, which I've called them plenty of times saying, hey, ain't no shame in that, honestly. Last time I called the suicide hotline, you know what they told me? My, whoever picked up the phone for me told me that they remind me of a, a that I remind them of a Marina and the Diamonds song and I was like okay little self-esteem booster I could use that fuck it I'm sorry that was a lot and I still probably left I know I left a lot out I still left a lot out and this is such a long video I'm sorry and you know you could call me money hungry all you want you could call me a loser and that I have nothing going on in my life anymore and even though I feel more alive than I have since I was 17 I feel more alive now than I have since I was 17. I feel more free than I've ever felt in my whole entire life. And the only thing I regret is not leaving sooner. So yeah, call me money hungry. But if this video gets monetized somehow, I'm donating the money to something for women, something for women that are getting abused. I meant it when I said this is to help people, okay? And I'm not a fucking liar like some people I know. So please, Love yourself. Yeah, I don't know how to end this now at this point because it's like, it was just so depressing. I'm glad it's over. I'm glad I don't have to talk about it anymore after this. Honestly, don't expect me to talk about this publicly at all anymore. Unless I like die. Well, in that case, then I wouldn't be able to. But, oh, also, I'm not planning to hurt myself at all. I'm just telling you, I don't plan on hurting myself, okay? Also, ex-boyfriend, if you're watching this, I'm not gonna be home for a while, for a long time, because I know you know where I live and I don't want to see your car outside again stalking me. So just don't even take the trip down here because I'm not gonna be here. <sighs> I love you, everybody who supports me. And um, please know the signs of abuse. Take all everything I just said. And if any of this pertains to your current relationship, get the hell out of there. All right, that was exhausting.
good night. I'm going AWOL for I don't know how long. Bye.